observations from the first practice, just your thoughts? Yeah, energy was really good, and guys uh, guys were ready to roll. Had an eight really good weeks with Schmidt, stations, all those things uh, building up to this point. Guys got spring break and then got on the field today, so it was it's good to be back on the grass. And overall, had a good day. It seemed like a positive. But there's a lot of guys that are not going through this for the first time. Yeah. Just speak to the continuity that you have with a bunch of those guys, especially Dylan as a quarterback. Yeah, just the understanding of what it all looks like. You know, the day to day of it, uh, what we're asking these guys to do every single day, and them understanding that's a it's a huge advantage to have that being year two. So. Understanding inside the scheme, uh, also a really big deal. So again, there's got to be a ton of growth in the next 14 practices. That's what it's all about, being better every single day. And it's it's that simple. So uh, that's that's what we got to get done. What stood out to you so far about Jackson? And yeah. Especially maybe what have you learned about him that you think maybe not important? Yeah, well, you just, you know, you don't have one-on-one -on -one football meetings nonstop like we do right now with him. So. The fact that he's come in and he's picked everything up and he's worked incredibly hard. He's spent a ton of time in the building on his own. Uh, he understands what it what it means to, you know, be the guy here and understand what it's going to take for him to get to that point. So uh, he's he's spent a lot of time and, and done a really good job in there, which has been uh, been good to see. Jeff, you guys uh, in, in the off season did more stations instead of seven on seven, according to Brent. How did that help your offense coming into spring? Yeah, I think it was just more of a mindset and a mentality of, of guys willing to, you know, put it all on the line and understand what it's going to take to uh, to get done what we want to get done. So uh, we did that for eight weeks, which was was really good. You mentioned that roster continuity and talking about Jackson. How how nice is it to have a guy like Dylan Gabriel who's been in the room, who's been in the program, kind of maybe leading him? No, it's it's been huge, and they've hit it off. Knew that they would from a personality standpoint. Dylan's. Uh, you know, he's an incredibly unselfish guy. He wants to be great himself, but he wants everybody around him to be great. So he's finding ways to lead every single day, and he'll continue to do so. Can you talk a little bit about Seth Luttrell's addition to the staff? Yeah, Seth, uh, obviously a, a, a great Sooner, a great alum, uh, somebody that loves Oklahoma, somebody that breathes toughness and edge and attitude, and a guy that's done a, you know, done a lot with his coaching profession. So uh, a dear friend and, and happy as heck to, to have him sitting in the room with us. Yeah. No, that's that's a, that was a huge part of it too. You know, he understands what it looks like every single Saturday now after going through it, which is a huge, uh, huge part of, of being year two, and it's and it's an advantage for him now. So, again, he's had really good growth in the meeting room. Uh, he'll continue to do so. He'll continue to lead that group and our unit and our football team uh, the right way, and look forward to him doing so. Between the end of the season and the start of today practice, what did you want to see out of your quarterbacks? You know. What kind of quality? I, I wanted to see a, a ton of depth, and that that was the thing with with Jackson being added to the room, uh, Davis, you know, needing to make strides, General needing to make strides, you know, we need to create depth in that room, and that's what the goal is for the next 14 days. You know, we've got to get guys in a position to go play at a high level, regardless of who's on the field, and it's easy to say and it's hard to do. So, those guys understand that. Uh, that's our fight every day, and that's uh, that's where we need to get. Your name, obviously came up quite a bit this offseason for other potential jobs. You're still here. Yeah. How much does that speak to how much you, you love this place and believe in the direction of this? And I, I love Oklahoma. I love Coach V. I love, you know, sitting in the chair that I'm able to sit in every day. And I don't take it for granted for a second. Uh, my family is unbelievably happy here. And I've got a chance to go chase what I love doing every single day at a place where I went to school. And uh, I, I just don't think that's very common. You get to do it with great friends every single day with people that I trust. So uh, blessed to be here, fortunate to be here, and we're going to get it right. You love Oklahoma. What is it about this place? Yeah, it's, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is that I've, I've had experiences here. You know, and so for me, it's, it's being back here and understanding that, you know, it's more than just a university. It's somewhere where I'm, man, I, I bled it, I wanted it, and uh, and I got a chance to, to do it again. And so that, uh, to me, that's pr that's pretty special. You can't talk names, obviously, but can you talk about just the struggles, the ups and downs, of with your name being thrown out there on the recruiting drill, just kind of trying to temper that behind the scenes with talking to the kids and stuff like that? Yeah, I think guys understand, you know, those conversations are those conversations, and, and guys that we're recruiting understand that, I love Oklahoma, and I, I, it was very clear to them. So uh, 
maybe a, a, a little drama out there, but not for me. Um, inside out and dealing with the guys I was dealing with every every single day. Those guys understood how much I love love being here every day. Do you, do you have any ambitions of being a head coach someday? Yeah, I, I have ambitions of getting Oklahoma back to where we need to get it. All right, that's that's what I am burning a passion for right now, and that's uh, it's going to continue to be that way until it until it happens. Jeff, your weapons on offense outside of the quarterbacks. What do you think you have coming in this game? Yeah, again, we've got two receivers that had production last year in Jalil and Drake. We don't have a ton of produ production outside of that. Again, I think we're in a position to where we've got guys that are really capable. Um, I love the fact that we got Stog. That dude's going to have a great year. I uh, feel really good about him and where he's at and then feel good about the running back room. Uh, we got we got guys that are going to have great production in that room, and I think we're building some depth in there with, uh, with a bunch of those guys. So... Uh, I like where we're at today. Again, we got 15 practice, 14 practices to, to get better and get where we need to be. Jeff, I know it's hard to tell, you know, in, in practices what you have in a running back sometimes. But was there some a little bit of surprise when you saw Gavin Sawchuk in the in the bowl game and, and what he was able to do? Well, you just don't know because you don't see it, you know. And, and so you always you always hope for the best and you think the best, but. Uh, until they get out there and it's live bullets and against a really good defense that we saw in that game, uh, for him to play the way he did, I think speaks to him and who he is, how he works, uh, dependability, accountability, and what his future is going to look like. Jeff, yeah. add a new leader to the wide receiver room. What's it been like getting Coach Jones back in there? Yeah, Coach Jones has been awesome. So a ton of history there with me and him uh, going all the way back when he was the head coach at Sock. I was recruiting Sock. And, uh, a, a guy that, that I trust and that is incredibly passionate about being great every single day. He, he fits our room and uh, happy he's here and been great for those wide outs. Jeff, there's been offseason chatter about speeding games up, running the clock, and setting up. Just your thoughts on how would that impact what you try to do offensively? I, I won't think about that until it happens. You know, for me, it's, it's all about maximizing every single day inside the rules that we're playing with right now. And if something happens to where we got to adjust, we'll adjust and we'll make it right. The offensive line obviously has moved up a little bit, yeah. particularly at tackle. How do you go about managing that? Yeah, of course, we wish uh, Walter and, and Sexton could go through it. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But at the same time, a bunch of guys are going to get a lot of really good reps and a lot of really good work. And so there's a fine line with that. But uh, uh, we're going to be really good up front. And uh, we got guys that, that are going to be dang good and they're capable. So uh, look forward to it. Sorry, you good. Uh, you had a thousand yard receiver last year. Is it important for this offense, better for this offense, or any offense, to have an alpha dog at receiver? Or would you rather have? Yeah, we when we've been our best, we've had a thousand yard guys, and so fifteen thousand yard guys, maybe in the last thirteen years or fourteen years, something close to that, to where that's been who we've been uh, offensively. So I would expect that. How do you develop that now in spring practice? Yeah, you got getting guys work and timing and and finding out who's the guy that's going to go make the competitive play, who's the guy that's going to make the explosive play, and who's the guy that can make a, a five yard catch and turn it into a sixty yard touchdown. So. We're going to find that out in the next 14 days. What's it been like seeing DeMarco's relationship with these running backs yeah. year after year and now another year? Yeah. What's that been like? It's, it's been great. Uh, again, I, I mentioned it earlier, but I'm getting to do this with people I absolutely love. And, and DeMarco has been unbelievable for those guys. This is a guy that's lived it at every single level, uh, and he's pouring into these guys every single day, and they take it and they run with it. So it's, it's fun to watch. You seem, like you, you seem like you have a little bit of Confident confidence this year coming into spring with the offense. Is that just you know more about it, or is it just you see that you've got more depth? Yeah, I think just understanding we're year two and there's a there's familiar faces and it's not the first time going through it, you know. So I, I think that creates confidence for everybody. As far as the depth in your tight end room, coach, obviously you guys are sort of banged up in that yeah. position. Got stock in the back. How do you feel about the depth overall now and where you guys are going to be this fall? I don't, I don't feel great about it this spring. Uh, that that's. I think that's pretty obvious uh, without some of these guys practicing. But uh, we got to create it, and the guys that aren't getting the reps on the field, they got to get all the mental reps and, and find, find ways to get better while not being on the field. And if we'll do that, then we'll be in a good spot this fall.